Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We have these little 10-minute sessions we've been doing for quite a while now. We've been talking about what God expects of you. This book I'm looking at has is in the title, What the Bible Says to the Believer. And we've talked a lot about a lot of different things, about prayer, and we talked about obedience. That's what we're talking about right now. It's going to be obedience, you and your obedience to God. Uh, we understand that we need to be obedient, don't we? Uh, as we're, we're children of God, we should be obedient. We expect our children, if you raise children like we have, and that you expect some obedience, and we know that there's times that they're not obedient, but uh, just like us, the, the Lord loves us, and he's, His love isn't conditional, but He does chastise us just like a loving parent would a child. So we're going to look at that and see here, uh, you need to focus on obeying God and live as God's obedient child. The verse I'm going to look at is First Peter. Uh, chapter 1 verse 14 he says as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance and what he's saying is that you don't look back to what you were you're not like you used to be uh, you're not fashioning yourself you're not conforming yourself to the, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life those things that we talk about where we're uh, to be obedient children he says that we mean to be children of obedience in other words it's to be a lifestyle Okay, the, the, we should, as we uh, get ready to act or react to something, we should have already kind of programmed in us. We have the Word of God, plus we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. And so as we face these different situations, again, as we get ready to act or react against a certain uh, situation, we want to keep in mind who we are and be, have ourselves kind of disciplined, uh, for lack of a better word, disciplined to react according to the Word of God. Okay, uh, we, we talked about that before, about uh, those bracelets some people wear, uh, what would Jesus do? And uh, the idea is that we should already be programmed that we know what Jesus would do, and that's what we should do without stopping to think about it. And again, it, it takes commitment, it takes dedication, and so that's what he's telling us. We're not, we're not to be like we used to be and living in the ignorance. As the, before we, had, we uh, lived in the, the lust in our ignorance. We didn't know. Now you know. Now you're born again. Now you're born into the family of God. So now you know better. So we're going to uh, not conform back. Uh, we use the term sometimes backsliding. We're not going to backslide into those old habits. You know, that's one of the things we need to be aware of. When you get saved, we, get, we become that new creation. We're an old, we were what we were. Now we're a new creation. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we become a new creature, a new creation, but we still have that same old sinful flesh. Okay, we're born into the family of God, we're saved, we're not going to lose our salvation. So, but we have to be careful that after we go through the initial uh, excitement, if you would, the initial thrill of being saved and knowing our sins are forgiven, and we now have Christ as our Savior, we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit, and we're studying the Word of God, you know, we're really in there, and we're growing, and then sometimes we have a tendency maybe kind of the plateau to flatten out a little bit and uh, so then if we don't watch it what can happen is that the, those old fleshly desires start kind of creeping back into the picture and he says we're not to do that we're we're to stay away from what we were he called us a child of evil before he said we were we were enemies of God before we got saved and so he's telling us we can't he said Peter's writing he says you don't be conformed to those evil desires that you had before don't go back to what you were and so we have to be careful that we don't backslide to those temptations. Uh, some things, some people live a pretty moral life and you know they're upright and so there's not a lot of change in their life when they get saved. Uh, they have a changed heart, a changed attitude, a changed destination, but uh, they haven't done a lot of those what we call it, quote unquote those sinful things, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the drinking and the drugs, the sex and all that stuff. They lived a, a moral, hard working life, so they got saved. But, but those of us that, that had those things in our past, we have to be careful that we don't they don't start appealing to us again. So uh, what can we be talking about? Well, he talks about money. Okay, and we understand that money is the root of all evil. Money in itself is not evil. We want to have money, but we want to be careful that it's not the object of our life, that it's not our focus. Our, our goal is to have more and more money. Uh, some people crave recognition. And so and, and after you get saved and, uh, and maybe you're not into the, uh, you go into the church and you're part of the church, but you're not really 
standing out. You're not really recognized. And some people crave that recognition. So if they're not getting being recognized for who they are, maybe their skills, uh, they start getting uh, kind of dissatisfied. The popularity kind of goes along with that. They want people like popularity if they're used to being in the limelight all the time. And all of a sudden, they're not there. God has put them in a place where they're, they're not in that uh, limelight. Uh, sometimes we get dissatisfied. We start start desiring to have those things and what it does is it influences in how we act and how we react to those situations in life as those things come into our life if, if it's not going to uh, put me in a popular position if it's not going to uh, make me uh, maybe a position of authority or uh, the idea of uh, sex clothes possessions we, we crave all these things these are natural cravings but it's how we deal with them and so we want to deal with them according to the word of god we need money we need money. We have to have money. It's nothing wrong with saving money. Uh, we have to have food. We want to be sure that we eat to live and don't live to eat. Uh, we sure we want to be looking at it right. We have property and possessions, but we like to have automobiles, trucks, cars, houses. Uh, you know, possessions. We like to have things, but uh, not. Don't let those things overwhelm us. Don't let those things become such a part of our life that we get we start we start shortchanging God. And that's why it can happen so much, these things. And so we want, again, be careful that we don't start slipping back. We need certain things in life, and God promises He will provide our needs. He don't give us all of our wants. Sometimes He gives us some of those wants, but He gives us what we need. And so we want to be careful that what we're looking at is uh, needful, and that, it, and that God's going to provide it for me, and I'm going to trust Him. So then what I do is I live obedient to His Word, then God can bless me. Uh, remember, when we start uh, backsliding, when we start getting, letting these things get in the way, what that becomes is what? It becomes a form of idolatry, doesn't it? It starts taking the place of God. We start we start uh, drifting away. Um, to, over in, I believe it was the sixth chapter of uh, Hebrews, it talks about that. So how we, sometimes we start drifting, and that's, you ever seen a, a somebody pull a boat into the dock, and they don't tie it off? And uh, even if it's on the lake where there's not a current there, but all of a sudden the, the boat will start kind of drifting away from the shore. And, that, and that's sometimes how we are as Christians. Uh, we, we don't get tied into the Word of God well, very well. And so what happens is we, we start drifting. And, and it's not so noticeable at first. Uh, but pretty soon we look and pretty soon we see that, that God is actually over there. We've moved away from God. He hasn't changed. He's still there. But we have a tendency sometimes to drift away. So we want to be careful that we're... Uh, maintain that obedience we want to see that uh, we're keeping this close relationship with god the close fellowship we establish the relationship and i always like to make that clear when we come to know christ as our savior we're born again we're born into the family of god so therefore we establish a relationship a father child relationship a father son a father daughter relationship and that relationship is all based upon our our faith and our trust in the lord jesus christ so it's by faith and trust in Him, we get through Him then and we get to the Father. So we have that relationship with the Father. Now we look at our fellowship. And so these things we're talking about here, when they start, when we start drifting away, they start damaging the fellowship. And when we're not in the fellowship with God that we should be, He, he can't bless us. God cannot bless sin. And so when we've drifted away and we're getting back into the, maybe the money, we're working more and more so we can make more and more money just to have more and more money. Or when we start wanting to uh, look at more possessions, buying, buying things, and all these kind of things, when we start getting to that, that starts becoming idolatry, and God can't bless us. So He tells us that if we are regard uh, iniquity in my heart, over in the Psalm was at 68, He said, "If I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me." So when I pray, uh, He's not going to hear me. So I want to be careful now that I, I'm, I'm satisfied with who I am and where I am. And I'm obedient to him. And, you know, I don't know about you, but years ago, uh, as I was a young boy growing up, and I, it was so much better when I was being obedient. There was more peace and harmony in the family. Uh, you know, was, when I was doing what I should be doing, we had that sweet fellowship with mom and dad, and so we got along well. But there's times coming, sometimes they, we didn't exactly, or I didn't exactly do what I should, and so there were some consequences to those actions and that. And so we want to be careful that we, we stay obedient to God. Remember, he loves you so much, He sent His Son to die for you. Jesus went to the cross and shed His blood for you and for me. So all He's asking us to do, very simple. He said, just obey me. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's what Jesus says over in John 14. So we're going to keep that idea. Said, and it's going to be a way of life. All right? I'm going to think about that. I'm going to work on that. And when I'm tempted, when I do backslide, He says, if I do something wrong, He says, if I confess my sin, He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin 
and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So when I acknowledge my sin, I've done something wrong, Lord, I go to him, I confess it with the idea of repentance. I don't want to do it anymore. And he says he'll forgive me and cleanse me. So first of all, you need to establish that relationship with the God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. And that's when you turn from the world, you repent, you turn from all these things we're talking about, you turn to God and put your faith and trust in that shed blood that's payment for your sin, and you have eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you again for this day, Lord, and we thank you for this time we can be together. And we pray, Lord, that our life would reflect a, a love for you and a, a desire to be obedient to you, Lord. We, we live in this world, Lord, and we know sometimes it gets to us and we, we stumble along. And we ask for your forgiveness of those sins that so easily beset us. And as you might just guide, and, guide us and work on our hearts and lives in a way that will please and bless you. And we know we'll be doing the best. And we'll thank you for all that in Jesus' name. Amen.